No Time to Die is the fifth and final installment for Daniel Craig as James Bond. Does he go out in a blaze of glory, or does his character fizzle out unremarkably and we move on with our lives? Let's talk about it now. No spoilers. That was like me doing a James Bond. Yeah, let's move on. Before I begin, you should subscribe and hit the notification bell to get these videos right up in your feed. Secondly, I want to tell you about where I'm at as a Daniel Craig James Bond fan. I love Daniel Craig as the character, but the movies go back and forth for me in terms of quality. Casino Royale still remains my favorite with Quantum of Solace taking a massive nosedive. Then we pick things back up again with Skyfall and then back on our face for Spectre. So here we are, the back and forth continues with no time to die. And I have to say, it's much better than the last outing, but unfortunately like Quantum of Solace, it's very much married to the film before it. So you're constantly reminded of Spectre. In fact, if you're looking to get drunk off your ass relatively quickly, play a drinking game where you take a shot anytime someone utters the word Spectre. You may possibly die within the first 45 minutes. This is a long one, it's two and a half hours. It's, it's too long. I think I would have whittled that down maybe a half hour. We have a nice, easy breezy two hour film. Now I'm willing to put in the time if the movie deserves it. Unfortunately, the villain here played by Rami Malek just isn't that exciting. He's certainly notable. There's been far worse, more generic villains and the back and forth between Bond and this character just isn't really there. They, they try to force it. They try to get a connection because we're wrapping up this whole storyline. Uh, it just doesn't really work for me. Daniel Craig's still a beast. He's still fantastic as the character. I would have loved to see more of him even in future films, but I understand it's, it's time to throw in the towel. But he's very much still physically active in this movie. They're not speeding up the film when he's throwing a punch or anything. It, it, it's very believable. Tackling guys, popping headshots left and right. In fact, he might be more of an expert marksman now than ever before. He's, he's really on his A game which does lead to some questionable actions later in the film, which I won't get into, but let's just say there's a lot of bad guys in a room and he has options to go after prominent key members, but instead goes after the guards instead. We still have that trope going on. Like, dude, you just shot two guys in the head, rolled and shot a third one in the head. Go for the main villain. I should also point out that for me, the new James Bond movies just aren't that fun. They're, they're closer to a Bourne identity style, especially in this one. There's even motorcycle chases where he's going upstairs and it just, it harkened back to Bourne supremacy, I think, one, one of them. In the last few installments, I've been leaning far heavier towards the Mission Impossible camp. I think they have far more fun with the material. They're, they're serious movies but they're not that serious. Uh, I will say that James Bond does have some gadgets in this one, which was nice. I feel like those go pretty MIA in the last couple. It was nice to see some car gadgets again, uh, little things here and there. There's also some new members to the team. We have the young new recruits coming in. There's another 007 agent and it's a woman and that'll freak some people out, but it's it's nothing to get concerned about. It, it plays into the plot line fine. I will say the actress, the character, Eh, pretty, pretty stick in the mud all around. Thankfully, we have Ana de Armas to pick up the slack. She is so freaking good in this. Unfortunately, she has like 10 minutes of time on screen. Maybe less, maybe less than that. It is just such a cock tease. She's there, she looks insanely attractive, like stupid attractive, and she kicks all sorts of ass. Plus her character is just fun and different. She, she's only been on the job for like a month. So she's very much a rookie, but she, she, is she though? Is she though? She's doing some pretty kick-ass stuff. Like I said, it's two and a half hours long. And I think the only reason it's compelled to be so long is because it's Daniel Craig's last outing. This could have been wrapped up quicker. Uh, I also think that it is kind of lacking some emotion. They're trying, they're trying to get some emotion out of me, especially towards the end, but I just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't feel it. There's just not a lot to the character. He's shrouded in intrigue, right? I think we got more out of Daniel Craig than we've got out of many of the other Bonds in the past. And that's great. They're, they're, they're spreading their wings a little bit. They're stretching out. But I think that James Bond still needs to go a little bit more out there with things. Either get a little sillier with the gadgets or just, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta change something. And I don't think throwing in, you know, a female Bond is gonna do that at all. I don't think they're going to do that, but I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think switching up the diversity or the cast is enough. You need to come up with a great script with some different flavor, a different tone, uh, just something that makes me go, yes, 
this is fun as hell. Now, there are moments like that in this movie where I was laughing, I was having a good time, it's certainly during the action scenes, but in between, I just didn't have that much interest, unfortunately. I'd love to know your thoughts, though, especially if you are a diehard Bond fan and have been with these movies for the last 20 plus or however there have been. I, I don't even know. I I've seen probably half of them. So that's where I'm at. So you can discredit this whole review in the comments if you want. Just be like, this guy doesn't understand James Bond. He's an idiot. Whatever. I, okay, fine. I am. Um, I just, I, I like going to movies. All right. So to summarize, there is a good amount of action. It's all pretty well done. I was invested. The villain's weak, even though I like Remy Malik. On a day, Armas should get a spin-off movie immediately. And I think that this is possibly an opportunity for this uh, studio to say, hey, we have, a, we have a James Bond world now. We have our titular character films, the 007 movies, and then we have the spin-offs with, with other characters, and then maybe they'll meet up in their movies and whatnot, Get, go MCU with it, why not? It, it's been so successful for everyone else. Thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, like the video if you had a good time, and hopefully I see you stick around. I can only imagine the bullshit articles that are gonna be posted about this movie and the fake outrage YouTube channels, it's gonna be just the worst. Hey, since you're for some reason still here and you like movie reviewers that don't care about the politics or all the other garbage behind the scenes, and you just want clear, concise movie reviews, maybe think about subscribing to me and becoming a Patreon or a YouTube Join member. You can join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or just hit the join button on YouTube. It would really mean a lot, especially in the hellscape that is YouTube in 2021.